I am at Adobe Spark and I'm logged into my account, as you can see by my profile picture in the upper right corner. My goal here is to create a new Adobe Spark video. So to get started, I'll click on the blue plus icon in the top center of my page. And then select video. Now Adobe Spark will walk you through some suggestions to get started with your video. I personally prefer to skip this step, but you may feel differently. I'm going to click skip and on this page it'll prompt you to select a template or you can start from scratch. Everybody is different. I like to start from scratch, so I'm going to click there. Now if you're new to Adobe Spark, at this point it's going to load some tutorials for you to watch which are really, really helpful. So don't skip over those if you're new. I strongly recommend that you watch them. And then it's going to take you into the canvas and let me show you around here. In the center of your screen is the slide that you are currently editing. At the bottom of your screen is your timeline. To add a new slide to your project, you click on this plus icon here over on the left. This is the current slide that I'm working on and you can see the slide number at the bottom. So right now I'm working on slide one. Adobe Spark Video adds a credit slide and an outro slide to every video. If I click on credits, you'll see that it says created with work by. Nothing is here yet because I haven't added any media to my slide from Adobe Spark. But once I start adding images and icons from the Adobe Spark library, it will actually auto credit the creators on this last slide, which is awesome because you don't have to worry about violating copyright. And then the final slide is a simple Adobe Spark logo. I'm going to click back to slide one so I can start working on my project. Let's look over on the right side of the slide now. You'll see there are three tabs. One is music. And if I click on music, you can turn your music on or off. I'd like you to try recording this video with music on. And you can also choose a song from the collection here. All of these songs are shared with Creative Commons licenses. Or you can just keep the default one, which is what I'm going to do. And now we can go over to theme. The theme is the look and feel of your project. You can change your theme at any time too. So if you want to see how it, how it would look in a different theme along the way, feel free to do that. I'm going to click on this one here called Sage. And now I'll toggle over to that last tab, Layout. This allows me to change the layout of the slide I'm working on. So I'm just clicking through the different layouts and you can see that the slide responds. I'm going to choose Title and Text because this is good for a title slide. Now I've entered a title for my video and I can click outside of the box and back into it to edit again. Now I'm going to click on the plus icon below and add my name. Now that slide is done. So now I'm going to go back to the timeline at the bottom and click the plus icon to add a new slide. For this slide, I think I'll add a photo. So I'm going to click photo. Over on the right, you'll see that I can upload a photo. And if you do, it's good practice to use an image with Creative Commons license to be sure that we aren't violating copyright and that we're modeling good practices for our students. Or you can click on Find Free Photos and enter a term. When you find a photo you like, you can click on it and it will add the photo to your slide or you can drag and drop it. I'm going to add a third slide by clicking on the plus icon at the bottom. And I think on this slide, I'll add an icon. So I clicked on icon and I'll type in my new keyword and click search, click on an icon that I like. And now I'm going to add another new slide. On this slide, I'll change my layout. We'll try the split screen this time. Add an icon to the right side. Choose an icon. And on the right side, I'll add some text. And when I'm done with that slide, I can choose to keep adding slides or depending on your workflow, you might want to start recording some audio. So let me show you how that works. You'll go to the slide that you want to record your audio for. If I click on one, I, I could record audio in this slide. I'm going to leave that one with no voice. I'm just going to let the music play on that slide. So I'm not going to record anything on that slide, but I will click on slide two and record some audio. To do that, I'll click and hold the red microphone icon. Today, many college faculty teach online, but do we really know how it feels to be an online student? Now, when you're done recording, you can click the play icon in the left to listen to your recording. 
Today, many college faculty teach online, but do we really know how it feels to be an online student? And if you like the way that sounds, then you're good to go. If you don't like it, you can always re-record by clicking on that icon again and doing it one more time. So you're always in control. I'm going to click on the next slide and record some audio here. I was really curious to learn more, so I spent some time speaking with an online student, and I'll tell you here about what I learned. I was really curious to learn more. Okay, so if we're done with that recording, we'll go to the next one. And basically, we just keep going until we're done. So I think you get the point about how Adobe Spark video works now. So let me show you the next step. When you're done with your video, you can go up to the top and click preview and it'll show you a, it'll, it'll show you a preview of your video mixed with the music. If you want to share your video, you can click on share and give it a title and choose whether or not you want people to know it was by you. Uh, and you can also choose to get noticed or not. If you click not, then you, you will basically be creating what's called a secret link to your video and no one will be able to find it. Okay. And then you can generate a link. Um, I'm not going to do that option this time though. What we're going to do is click on download. And when you click download, it's, it basically prepares your video. And in a few minutes, you'll, your video will download to your computer. This is a good workflow because once it's downloaded, you can upload it to YouTube and then caption your video and embed it in Canvas for your students. Now I'm working in Chrome, that's my browser, and so I know that when my files download in Chrome, I see a notification in the lower left corner. And so I can see that my video has downloaded and I am done with my video. And now for the fun part. I'm gonna go down to the lower left corner and click on those little dots next to the notification of my video and select open. Now on my computer, videos open in QuickTime. It will likely be different on your computer depending on your operating system and preferences. And I'm gonna just play my video. Today, many college faculty teach online, but do we really know how it feels to be an online student? I was really curious to learn more, so I spent some time speaking with an online student, and I'll tell you here about what I learned. And there's your video.